Hello everyone, welcome to today's podcast. I'm your host Shaheen and today I'm sitting down with Lau Taro. Uh, if you've been following the Let's Talk Footy podcast, Lau has been on before and he's one of the coaches uh, from Toronto Hip Hop Football Club. So it's my pleasure to have you with us today, Lau. So welcome again. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's really nice to be here. I think uh, we have a lot to talk about and uh, looking forward to a lot more of these podcasts, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm very excited. So let's get down to business. Um, as you said, there's a lot to talk about. I think the most important uh, thing that happened over the weekend was the FA Cup final between Chelsea and Leicester City. Uh, to be honest, I was expecting Chelsea to, to win that, especially yeah. after eliminating Real Madrid. Obviously, again, if you've been following the podcast and you know me, I'm a big fan mm-hmm. of Real Madrid. So after Chelsea beating uh, Real Madrid in the Champions League semifinal, they look really good. So I was expecting them to, to win the uh, final. And to be honest, they played really well. They, they, they did play a lot. Like They played um, very well, not only um, like defensively. They had a lot of chances going forward, too. I think it's just uh, they're in a weird situation where they have a lot of very important matches right after each other. Right? Yes. They're going to play against Leicester again to see who's in the top three, top four, obviously the Champions League finals. Yes. Um, but Leicester winning, you know, it just after the whole fiasco with the Super League, I think it's very fitting for Leicester to, uh, to win the FA Cup. Yeah, uh, I think, I don't want to say they're the underdogs now uh, because th- since they won the league, you know, they've always been up there, but and it felt good, especially <laughs> because... Chelsea did eliminate Real Madrid again. Yeah. Uh, it was nice to see. But a few important things happened in the game. Uh, first and foremost, the handball that wasn't um, given. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, he's, you know, like, obviously it's off the knee. Like, it was very close to call. The thing yeah. is, if you start analyzing that, then obviously later on you analyze the offside. Right. It's like we're li- like we're looking at very small, small things. Right. How small do we go when judging that? Right. It's like, is it a referee mistake at that point or to be, to I, be uh, honest, think? I think both of the calls were good calls. Um, but uh, I don't think the handball should have been given because yeah. uh, like he was even turning away. Um, yeah. So he it was it was his right arm. Uh, it, it came off his knee. I don't think there was any intention behind it. Exactly. So I think yeah. that was the right call. The offside was also offside. But, and, and, and I am a fan of VAR. I think VAR can help the game because at the end of the day, you know, in important games, you want the right decision to be made. Exactly. But my argument is, how are the players supposed to avoid that and we've seen offside calls that have been called offside that have been closer than that um, exactly right so as a player how are you supposed to avoid that you have to now really watch your run the timing of your run like players leaning forward arms leaning a little bit too forward it's good it's gonna not start affecting the players uh, movement their decision yeah. and and my question is does that ruin the game yeah, it also takes away a lot of the responsibility from a linesman, right? Over the the last season, or the last two seasons that they've been implementing VAR, um, I've been noticing a lot of linesmen are very reluctant to even call anything, right? Because obviously you don't want to look... Yeah, they're scared of making the wrong mistake and then getting corrected after. But yeah. is that preventing them from making any call, call at all? Like, I think... Uh, it's it's different when when you can review something in slow motion frame by frame the other thing too is like when you're making that close of a call like we've seen a lot of um decisions where do you call it on the arm when the forward is running right yeah yeah it's like very minute details i think obviously var solves a lot of issues but it also brings up a lot of issues yeah yeah and there was there was always a lot of talk when there was no VAR, you know. Uh, yeah. Linesmen, referees would make mistakes. At the end of the day, they're human. Um, so VAR is supposedly 
was supposed to solve that, but it has its own, as you said, issues. So, yeah. but I think it was the right call. I think in a final, it was offside. Um, I think as a player, you just have to do what you got to do. And then if it's offside, it just sucks, man. <laughs> yeah. And also that doesn't take anything away for how well uh, Leicester played. Uh, yeah. Yuri's goal was, if you're going to oh. score a goal in a final, like oh. you should score like that, right? Like as, as soon as it left his foot, you knew it was going top corner. Yeah, could, he, he, could would Mendy save that though? No, I don't think so. I, I think that that strike, he yeah. the moment it left his foot, he knew it was he was already celebrating, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no. and he he's a top player. I I think, uh, Tielemans, from his time in Andalucci too, like he was. You could tell he's a, a different type of player. He's still yeah. very young. He looks yeah. like a very mature player, but he's only what 23, 24. He's cool. Um it's gonna be very exciting to see him in the Euros. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Um and uh, Peter Schmeichel made two really Casper Schmeichel. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. I got... yeah. Whoops, yeah, that was his dad. Um yeah. he made he made two big saves, man. Like yeah. I hit Really, especially really especially the second one against yeah. uh, Mason Mount. Yeah, uh, he saw the, it late. The, yeah, not only did he see it late, but the way that he that uh, Mason Mount caught it right after the bounce. Yeah, like it was going fast in the slow motion camera. Yeah, no, I know. So that reaction save that that was, yeah, that was great. Also, another really good thing about the game. I don't know if you saw like the after game celebrations. Uh, they brought out um, the chairman, and they were celebrating with him. He was lifting the trophy. No, I didn't see that. No, I saw a little bit of the celebration, but I didn't see that. I, I heard though. I heard he he took the cup home. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But he he was having a great time out there. I think that that's why I think like Leicester winning the FA Cup. Like I said, like especially after all the the Super League stuff, like that's how you're supposed to run a club, yeah. Leicester. Like. They came up from nothing. They have a lot of, like, swagger about them. Jamie Vardy, it was, like, the 80th minute. He won a corner, and he's cheering the whole crowd up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's very fitting that Leicester wins it, and then they truly deserve, to be honest. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I was very happy to see them win. The question is, is Chelsea going to win the Champions League final? That's, yeah, that's another they, big they, question. They've been sitting the last two games. That they faced them, yeah. so the recent games say Chelsea has a good chance, but I don't know, man. I just think Man City is too is too good. They're gonna they're gonna go all out, all out to yeah. win that. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, City they haven't played the best in the last couple of weeks, but also they haven't been fielding their best. Right, they've been constantly turning up. But I think obviously this final the best 11 players are going to be on the field, right? You can't really, yeah. that's the thing about City. You can't really compare them week by week because there's such turnover on their roster yeah. that, you know, once they feel their full 11, yeah. um, even like, I don't know who's going to start up top for them. It, I, think for, I think Foden. I think. As like, as the yeah. point? Yeah, I don't think he's going to go with a number nine. I think that he's yeah. been trying that and they've been, I think that has been the best Man City. Every time they haven't started a uh, yeah. classic number nine, um, I think they've been better. It's just yeah. so hard to play against them like that. Yeah, I mean, everyone's so versatile. Everyone can play basically any position up top. They yeah. all like move around. Yeah. It's uh, it's a shame that like, I think this was uh, Gabriel Jesus' like season to like prove what he what he can do and he he really well, didn't do much this season yeah well with Aguero leaving hopefully he'll have more chances um yeah in the but future. he had plenty of chances this this season he did um yeah. with Aguero being injured but yeah it, it kind of looks like not having a number nine works better for Pep he used to yeah. do that with Barcelona having Seth Fabregas up top sometimes yeah. you know or even Messi, yeah. who would play them as false nine, or yeah, yeah. Um, two more things. Well, City won the league. I think that was very obvious. Uh, yeah, it was two, coming. Harry Kane came out and said he wants to leave. 
he, apparently he's told Spurs that he wants to leave. So it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up. Is he going to stay in England? I think so. I think he's a, he's like a typical English striker. I don't think he leaves the EPL. Um, Would he want to play for another club though? I think so. I think, I mean, I know like Spurs fans think that they're like, you know, top four sometimes, but there, there's a clear stepping stone from Spurs yeah. to the top tier teams. It's not yeah. like you're going, you're not pulling like a Carlos Tevez going from United to City. Yeah. You're, you know, you're, there's a clear yeah. level. And no. I think, I think you can turn up for like, for like United, um, City, but like we were talking about, the city even need a number nine anymore. No, right? I don't think I don't think I don't think he fits Pep Guardiola's style of play there, to be honest. Yeah, I think, exactly. I think I can see him at Man U. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't see him anywhere else. Maybe Chelsea. There's a lot of rumors Chelsea might be interested in him. But I think with Kane, even if he does go to let's say a rival team, he's done so much. He's he's done everything he can for Spurs like Spurs fan cannot be upset at him where wherever he decides to go. So exactly. he's done he's done what he's supposed what what he was supposed to do as a as a Spurs player and now they just have to let him go. Which yeah, is gonna I mean, suck. Because I mean if you're Harry Kane, at the end of the day, like you've accomplished everything you, you can in that club. Trophies didn't show up, you know, yeah. they had a few chances, they didn't take them. Yeah. But um as an individual player, there's not much more you can do in that situation. You gotta go somewhere if you wanna, if you really wanna take that next level and you know be someone that that wins trophies. What do you think of him going to like Real Madrid or something? No, I don't. I don't think Real Madrid. I don't. Th- Benzema is still on fire, right? He has another yeah. two, three years on in him. Um, especially with the season he's having right now. Well, speaking of Real Madrid, well, Zidane said he's going to leave. He's told his, yeah. he's told the players he's leaving. So that was very really interesting. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I don't know if I'm happy or upset because I have been criticizing Zidane a lot. But at the same time, who's who's going to replace him? I had a lot of hope for Jose Mourinho to come back, but that's not going to happen because he went they to They were Roma. saying maybe uh, Raul. Raul, yes. So that's, yeah. Pretty unproven, but it could work. It'd be interesting because... Barcelona's having the same issues, right? Uh, Coleman's probably leaving Barcelona. Yeah. So imagine the next El Clasico, Raul on one bench, Javi on the other. I think that yeah. would be... That'd well, be he, I, think, I, think, I think Javi extended his contract. I don't think he's going to come. Oh, in, uh, in uh, Qatar? Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, if, I think if, if Barcelona I mean, comes calling, yeah. well, what, can you, what can you do? Who knows? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, obviously, Barca is out of the title race right now. Yeah. They lost at home 2-1 to Celta. Yeah, that was Suarez that was really scored the winner for Atletico Madrid. So, <laughs> Barca, I don't know how Barca fans feel about that. But Suarez sco- scored a very, very late winner. So, it's going to go down to the last game. If Atletico Madrid drops points and Real Madrid wins, it's going to be for Real Madrid. So, that's yeah. going to be very exciting to watch. I think, like, from a Barca perspective, I think losing Suarez this season and not really getting anyone to replace him, like, that pretty much ended their season right at the beginning because such a big player. Like, yeah, he's a I, bit old, but look what he did for Atletico Madrid this season. I just don't understand that decision, man. I mentioned this before. I Some of the Barca decisions have made, like, z- literally... Z- zero sense and i've tried to i'm like maybe there's this maybe there's that like from whatever angle i look from no it makes no No. sense no yeah that was i mean looking looking at the game against delta vigo like that's a game that first of all you're playing at home you're playing like not obviously not in front of any fans but like you're playing in your home field a must win game and to let the goal did you see the first goal yeah yeah i did what what was that i don't that know was, man they, they just they're choking no, man they're choking but it's not even i don't think it's even choking because to choke you have to put effort they're just not putting effort pk kind of won one way he shot from outside the box to stegen 
just look at it going. Move. In. <laughs> didn't yeah, even move. It, it looked like they were still in the training ground. Like, okay, let's get the next one. But I don't know. I think and there was some clear frustration from Messi too. Um he was doing yeah. everything. If if you're relying on Messi to score your headers, there there's something there's a problem with, with your eleven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like um I don't know. I, I think uh I think there's a lot of problems going on at Barca. And, and it's on it's only gonna get worse, man. As if Messi leaves or when Messi retires, that's when Barca's problems are really gonna start. Yeah. It's it's he, the exact same up. it's the exact same thing that happened with Ronaldo and Real Madrid. And I think Barca relies more on Messi than Real Madrid relied on Ronaldo, to be honest. Exactly. So and to yeah. Also, like um lately we've been hearing that Aguero might be going to Barca. But what does that solve? You guys, they got rid of uh, Suarez last season because he's yeah. too old. And they're, they're replacing him now with someone that's equally as old and even more injury prone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's hard. I mean, it's going to, obviously, it's going to come down to the wire for Atletico Madrid. I think between Atletico and Real Madrid, the only thing I can say against the Tactical is that they should have won it like a month ago. They yeah. really, they had such a big lead. They kind of let it swindle away. But um, I think uh, over the whole season, the Tactical has been a bit more complete than Real Madrid. Yeah, I agree. Even though Real Madrid has a better head to head against them and Barca, yeah. I think Atletico Madrid has been more of a consistent team. Uh, Real Madrid has a th- more difficult opponent in Villarreal, but Villarreal is playing Man United three days after that in the Europa League final. So it's yeah. going to be very interesting to see if they're going to go strong against uh, Real Madrid in the league or are they going to rest some key players and save them for the final. I think they would do that because they have nothing yeah. to gain in the league, right? Nothing is going to really change for them. But in the Europa League final, if they win, they the European exactly. champions. Exactly. Yeah, because um, right now I think VRL is fifth or sixth. So, yeah, they can't really gain too much ground. They, they're really, for, for um, a Champions League spot, they're really relying on winning that final against United. Um, yeah. I'm just going to check something real quick because I don't think – I think they rescheduled the games. I thought wins. it was on Sunday, but I just – last time I checked, it was on Saturday at 12. Uh, but all the games were at Saturday on Saturday at all. So I don't know if they okay. change it from Sunday to Saturday. Um, from what I can see, no, it's still the twenty second. Okay, that makes sense because it would be a very unfair advantage if um if they move it to like the Sunday, and Real Madrid knows the score line that they need, kind of thing. You know? No, they wouldn't just they wouldn't just change one or two te- uh, one or two games. It was either going to be all the games. But again, I, I'm, I could easily be wrong, but the last time I checked, the last games were also on Sunday. And, yeah. and, and now it says it's on Saturday. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But all the games are going to be Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, time. that's going to be exciting. Yeah, It's yeah. going to be... Um, I like when there's like multiple games at the same time. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. you, uh, you can just hop channel to channel. See what's oh, going on. I'm gonna watch one game on TV, one game on my laptop, one game on the yeah. iPad. That, maybe that's one the game on my phone. Have, have different screens. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend thinks I'm crazy, but that's all right. Another thing I want to talk about with regards to the EPL. Did you see Allison's header? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I didn't see it uh, live. I um, I checked the score. It was one one, and I'm like, okay, you know, that's that's not the best for Liverpool. They really need this win. And then I went to work out and then I checked my, I checked the app and it's like Allison 90 plus five. I'm like, no way. What, what happened here? And yeah. then I watched the, the ending again. And wow. Yeah. That was, it's, it's weird when, when forwards, sorry, when um, Goal goalies givers. go up for, for corners. Yeah. Cause it's like who marks them, right? Obviously it, they get that extra player in the box. It has to be, them? it has to be decided so quickly from the team that's defending. Right. And they don't, they don't know that, but, but by the time they, they realize it and they organize again, 
uh, the cross was in. He was pretty open. He just got it was a really good header too. Yeah, he it was. It was really good. Places in the corner with power too. It was really good. Yeah, that's the thing. Especially now we're like in the pro game, like set pieces are so well rehearsed. You know, going into a game, um, everyone knows exactly who's marking who when it yeah. comes to set pieces. Adding that extra player in the box, especially someone that's like six foot five, exactly. right? Yeah. Really confuses and it, and lately I've been seeing more goalies score. I don't know if you, I see like all these like weird highlights on Reddit and stuff, oh, and really? it's yeah like I don't know Slovenian league and it's like a goalie scores, or something like that. It's uh, it's remember, really good. I, and... I remember Courtois Real Madrid. He went up uh up for a header in a game and he got an assist. I think he got an assist. Yeah. So yeah. It's good. I mean, if you have a goalkeeper that's six foot seven, six foot eight, yeah. you should really go up if you really need him to. Yeah, I think Sevilla's goalie uh, Bono scored a few a few months back as well, or maybe in the last season. But yeah, it's mm. it's interesting. Um, it really helped out. Um, it really helped out Liverpool on that last minute win. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're still one point behind though, right? They're fifth. So yeah, they they have a they have a way easier schedule than everyone around them. Yeah. But um yeah, they, they really need those results to be honest. Well, the last game in EPL, the last game in La Liga, it's going to be very interesting. Who do you think going to win the league in La Liga? Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid. What are your predictions? I think logically, I think Atletico Madrid wins it. They've been the most complete. But you never know with Real Madrid, right? They they surprise you. I, I can I can already picture like a 90th minute header to to win two one, and then some crazy stuff happens at the Atletico Madrid game. Simeone gets into a fight or something. Um, I think having the two games side by side is gonna be is gonna be a great great Saturday. All I'm gonna say is, if Real Madrid wins the league, I'm gonna rock my Real Madrid jersey in the next podcast. My social media is gonna explode. <laughs> I'm gonna be very happy, and I I really wonder who's gonna replace it then, because I don't know. Just like you said, I don't know if Raul is ready, but yeah. Zidane was in the same situation, right? He was exactly. in charge of the beating, but he was an assist. He was the assistant for Carlo Ancelotti when when he was the head coach in the last year. So yeah, he, I I think Raul. I think he's coaching the U23s or the U20s or something. But, I mean, that's not the same, no, same it's level. Not. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Anything else you want to you wanna mention before we wrap it up? No, I think, I think we've got everything covered. A lot of interesting games this weekend. Um, again, I th- I'm really happy for Leicester. I think yeah. that's... That's like a a win, even if you're not a, a supporter of Leicester. That's like a win for football in general. Yeah, the, yeah. a team that was excluded from the Super League, uh, showing how it's done. You know, they really deserved over the last decade. They've just been on a on a very big uphill. It also shows one of the many things that was wrong with the Super League, right? Yeah, uh, Juve is still. Uh, interested in that and i think Serie A, the italian league has sent a very big ultimatum saying if you're still by by the time the season starts next year if if you hasn't pulled out they're going to be kicked out of the league so yeah and if, but, and if you and if you risk that do you think ronaldo is going to stick around they're already having a lot of problems with Pirlo, you know i, I think ronaldo's gone by this by this summer after the you euros think so? i think he's not coming back to juve you think I so? Think, I think so. I think so. I mean, he is the he's the top scorer, obviously. But where's he uh, gonna go? Man U. Well, that's Man U would be amazing. I think that would be that'd be like you know if you if you were to write a, a movie about it, he'd go to Man U. Um, but I don't I don't know. I think it's been a very underwhelming season for for Juve. Um, they have a lot of of quality players, but nothing really to show for it. Um, I think I think it's the coaching, man. I'm a. I really believe this is another reason why I don't know if Raúl is ready for Real Madrid. These yeah. big name players just 
retiring and then two years later becoming uh, the manager or the head coach, you got to, yeah, man, it's management is a completely different story, right? Um, so Pirlo, I don't think he was ever ready. It's the same thing with Arteta. I've been very vocal about it. And Henri as well. Henri, right? Henri, ever since he started coaching, it's been, it's been pretty terrible. awful. Yeah, yeah. It's been pretty and, awful. And you know what? Gary Neville, I think, had it the worst, but he was yeah. smart. He 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 recognized it very quickly. He's like, okay, this is yeah. not for me. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. So and yeah. and now his uh his brother is coaching in the MLS. Yeah. With, uh, right. Inter, Inter Miami. Miami. Yeah, I think that's that's all for this week. All right, man. That was a, it was my pleasure to have you. Good discussions. Hopefully the next time you hop on here, Real Madrid is the champions of La Liga. If not, yeah, we'll then I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> we'll see. Well, thank you for having me. Hopefully we can do this in a weekly basis. And I think we yeah. have a lot of, uh, a lot of good soccer ahead of us this summer. I agree. I agree. It's going to be a very busy summer and I'm looking forward to chatting with you more. For those of you that are listening or watching, please like, share, subscribe, show your support, and I guess we'll see you next time.